Good morning everyone, Treasure Troller here from the partially mask wearing militant state of Michigan where we have Gretchen Whitmer as our governor and dictator and if you don't believe me ask Kelly Stafford we're also famously known for having in the plot to kidnap our dictator and governor Gretchen Whitmer we actually had more FBI agents and informants than we did conspirators. So today, bit of a quick vlog. I just feel like sometimes I live in uh, like Westworld, or this country lives in Westworld, some sort of alternate reality where there's nothing wrong with the dementia in chief why he's just fine yeah he stumbles over words a couple times falls down a few flight of stairs but hey overall he's okay you know uh, immigration on the southern border that's that's that that's a right wing thing there's nothing wrong with there the immunity enhancement program uh, just follow the science and do what you're told and everything will be fine. So I've... Not that this world or this alternate reality of things bothers me that much. I go to work every day. So it still doesn't affect me uh, for the most part. The, the mask wearing thing, I, uh, I just didn't wear one, to be honest with you. So, I just, uh, it just bewilders me that, that people uh, are just sort of not keen to the obvious. I mean, where is Captain Obvious when you need him? He uh, certainly isn't here in this country at the moment. But there is a glimmer of hope. There is a small sliver of hope, and that is with the newly formed, I guess you could call them political party, in the pragmatic progressives, and which are comprised of former progressive. Democrats that have now decided to, well, just settle for the scraps that Joe Biden throws him. Uh, they're they're just gonna they're just gonna hold Joe accountable. There's no more Green New Deal. Uh, there's no more, uh, especially Medicare for All. They've they've given up on Medicare for All, which has uh, Jimmy Dore uh, absolutely livid. You know, the Bernie Sanders crew are now the pragmatic progressives. Where are all these people when Jimmy Dore needs them? Um, but I want to tell you the, the, the dirty little secret of uh, Obamacare and Medicare for all. It's not about health care, people. It is not about health care. If you go into a hospital, yeah, that's, all right, there's people, people behind me. Um, if you go into the hospital and you don't have insurance, you're going to get treated. Now, there is a chance that if you go into a private hospital and you need more extensive uh, work done other than uh, maybe an x-ray and a, a prescription for Tylenol, they're going to send you to a I guess you could call it a public hospital. But you will be treated. So this Medicare for All and Obamacare, it's about insurance. And it's about insurance basically because, especially government-backed insurance, because the government pays. The government pays. They don't have to squabble as much over rates and everything else 
So that's a dirty little secret. All this Obamacare and stuff, it's not about getting you health care. It's about making you pay for health insurance. So the other thing that I, uh, I've really stopped watching or listening to Scott Adams. Uh, he just gets to be too infuriating for me, but I did catch a small sample of his show yesterday, and he's on this kick of, it sounds right, but it isn't. And yesterday he was, he was uh, saying, well, housing prices are, seem to be up right now, but over the past decades has the cost really gone up? The cost of living space has it gone up? And Scott's answer is, well, even though you may think it's gone up, it really hasn't. Uh, you're paying for the same amount of square footage today, and he's talking about living. You know, the mortgage payment, um, what it costs to heat the place and all that hasn't gone up since the 80s. But Scott, well, he's not quite divulging all the information, I guess. Or he, he seems to think that making adjustments in other areas seems to make the rate stay the same. For instance, families were bigger back in the 80s. There was, it was easier to raise, say, a family of five in, in a, I, I don't know what square footage house is, so let's say 3,000 square foot house. A family of five could live in a 3,000 square foot house. And the cost for each person was, you know, $10 or something like that. But now that $3,000 house, although the price hasn't gone up, and a lot had, to me has to do with the interest rates. Back in the 80s, go check out the interest rates in the 80s compared to what they are today. Especially at the very beginning of 1980. But in order to, in a sense, hit that equivalent living space number well instead of having say the husband and wife and five kids well now it's down to three kids so other areas have had to compensate to keep the living space at the uh, same rate now that I think about it I wonder about the like the divorce rate, if it was larger or not. And uh, but when you consider smaller families and maybe someone's only needs a two bedroom house, when the kids, when the kids come to visit, cause the judge makes, the judge makes the uh, daddy say, you got to take the kids uh, every other weekend. So he doesn't need quite the space. So, does, it just doesn't matter who you listen to. Uh, the numbers just always have to be viewed. And you know what? Forget about listening to these people. Just don't even listen to them. Just go to work, pay your bills. And the other thing, too, I guess. Oh, someone said, commented about how there wasn't much traffic. Well,. <coughs> on one of my other vlogs coming down the same road. A little bit more traffic today. The other thing too, a couple of things was, um, I mentioned very, very early in my in my vlogs about the about the border situation and how the, how one thing that wasn't mentioned back then was the immunity enhancement program, how uh, these uh, immigrants, illegal, as they may be, would um, potentially be a uh, super spreader. But no one was really talking about that. 
So, not that it was any uh, genius brainstorm on my part, but, um, you know, I had thought about this months ago. But the other thing before I uh, before we end it is another one of these uh, left world kind of things, and this is uh, Joe Biden's interpretation of Bill Clinton's depends on uh, the definition of the word is, or depends on what is means, or whatever it was. Uh, Joe's is going to be the definition of fully vaccinated. See, fully vaccinated doesn't mean what you think it means. For instance, the uh, the Moderna product, there were uh, two shots for that. You needed two injections for the Moderna. I don't know about the Johnson & Johnson. But anyways, so at this point in time, technically you'll be fully vaccinated. But what happens if there is a booster that they want you to get later on? So I'm thinking that no longer means you are fully vaccinated and all the rights and privileges of a free person will no longer exist for you until you become an updated fully vaccinated person. So that's another thing to be looking out for in the near future. Fully vaccinated means uh, what it means today. It doesn't mean what it means uh, two months from now, six months from now. It just means for today. So look at, look for it to be a revolving door of jabs in the near future. In my humble opinion, that is. So that's about it for the day. Treasure Troller saying aloha and good day.